Metropolis receives its water from the Cedar River. All of the rain, spring, and creek water that flows into it are channeled towards Seattle. The Cedar River watershed and the system that distributes this water are maintained and operated by Seattle Public Utilities. Hundreds of employees monitor the 364 square mile area and ensure that fresh water is delivered to nearly one and a half million people. In 1901, the first dams and wood pipelines were built on the Cedar River in order to provide water to the fledgling city. In 1912, the city of Seattle altered the course of the river to flow into Lake Washington rather than follow its natural course into the Duwamish River. Prior to colonization, the majority of the Cedar River watershed was safe to drink from. Currently, the natural environment has degraded to such a point that the water must be chemically purified. Once the river reaches the Landsberg Dam, the water is treated with chlorine and fluoride. Chlorine is used to remove bacteria, and the fluoride is used for ambiguous purposes. Ultimately, the water is subjected to artificially generated ultraviolet light in order to burn away the last of the contaminants. It is through this strange alchemy that humans can now drink the toxic water. Without this treatment, the population of the metropolis would be forced to flee in search of fresh water. The entire watershed is restricted to everyone besides authorized personnel. This is done not only to prevent any human contamination of the water, but to protect the critical infrastructure. The ecosystem around the watershed is now being allowed to heal only so that the humans who originally contaminated it can drink from its waters once again. The unused river water is channeled around the Landsberg Water Treatment Center and continues onward towards Seattle. After leaving the area around North Bend and traveling down to the Maple Valley, the water begins to gather more pollutants. Every manner of chemical contaminant is produced by the cities along the river, and all of them eventually find their way into the currents. Highway 169 travels along the banks of the Cedar River for several miles, creating a large amount of motor oil and other contaminants. Despite the paved bike path that was built along its side, the highway continues to pollute the water. There is no escaping the simple fact that the roads were not built to keep the land healthy. 
They were built to keep capital in motion. Highway 169 eventually enters the city of Renton and passes through the houses and strip malls typical of any suburban area. The highway turns into 2nd Avenue and once again travels over the river. By the time the water reaches Renton, it has become another example of what industrial civilization has done to all the waters it touches. A robotic water, an enslaved water, selectively channeled into chemical perfection with the rest left to be tarnished and ruined. Within the metropolis, water is meant to be used up and then forgotten, becoming nothing more than scenery to increase real estate prices. The last portion of the Cedar River flows past the Renton Municipal Airport and behind the Boeing Renton factory. The river gathers its last bit of pollution from this facility before finally merging with Lake Washington. The lake itself is heavily contaminated from over a century of industrial byproduct and human wastefulness. It is the final resting place of the Cedar River. Water from the river is channeled into subterranean pipes at the Landsberg Dam and it is then delivered to a processing center in Renton. From there, it is distributed to throughout the metropolitan area. Seattle Public Utilities charges four to five dollars for every 100 cubic feet of water used. While water is essential for human life in the metropolis, massive amounts of it are paid for and then wasted every day. This chemically treated water, magically appearing from nowhere and disappearing into a void, is displayed all over the metropolis as a sign of wealth and serves as a testament to the taming of nature. In the metropolis, people are constantly reminded that water is in abundance and can be used for the most useless and extravagant purposes imaginable. The architects of the contemporary urban world have tried their best to make this chemically treated water appear as abundant as it once was in wild nature, flowing freely from springs and cascading down the mountain valleys. But this abundance is a fragile illusion, easily interrupted by a drought or other natural disaster. Despite the best efforts of the architects, scientists, and engineers, Wild nature will always be the force that determines whether Seattle lives or dies.